pilot right turn for 10, 15 minutes and then 10, 15 degrees back the other way? Or how much of a... I go pretty drastic. I mean, I... I you know, I... I, I I, tr I turn to the point where you're just trying to keep the boards. Watch the boards. The yeah, exactly. Right. I, 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 I push the boards as far as I can push them. I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want anyone, you know, any line skipping over top of the other line or anything because that causes everything else. But I mean, I'm always watching on my turns. But I, I, I'm pretty. I try to be pretty aggressive on, on my turns until I until I find that pocket of fish. Okay, because you gotta, you know, you, 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 we're we're trying to trigger the bite. So what? So what we do is. I mean, if you hit a, a, a pocket of fish and you and, and they're seeing all the same thing, all the same direction, and well, and you, you may miss a couple of those, uh, you know, where you know turning and changing things up as you're going through the area, that that will definitely change and can help your bite. Um, so so yeah, I, I I tend to run a little bit faster than a lot of people, uh, but. Again, I'm not going to say that anyone's wrong because I know some of those guys that troll really slow do really well too. So, um, uh, here's another little how how many how many people troll with uh, say you know you know walleye boats that have the trolling motor and everything on on, on the front as well <laughs> as the back. I know for few you do uh, so. Uh, so the guys, do you, do you use your your front trolling motor for steering? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. This is something that I've done to my trolling motor for steering. I, I steer the same way. I've got a, I've got, you know, I've got an iPilot, and I, and this has saved my marriage. So seriously, you know, from telling my wife, turn, turn, no, the other way, you know. So, so yeah. So this this this, this little gadget right here is worth its weight in gold. Um, so I mean, so so basically, what all you do is, uh, you know, you you can use it with the, with your big motor. You, you really can't troll with uh, the trolling motor for salmon. You know, the, the duration of the time and the length that it's on, you'll you'll burn your batteries out, you know, fairly quick if you're just trying to troll with your with your uh, you know with your uh, front battery power trolling motor. So, uh, you know, you put your main motor on and lock it down straight, and uh, or your kicker motor and I do all of my adjustments, all my all my steering, with with the iPilot. So, I I would I would strongly recommend anyone that's got anything like that to get this type of setup. Or you, even you, if you use your foot pedal, uh, you know your standard foot pedal, it's a lot easier. Um, and one of the things that I have done with my trolling motor is I put a fin with aluminum on the bottom of it. I had attached it to the keel. Attached it to the keel. And then, uh, you know, I, I just took a took a, a pipe strap. And what that does is put it in the water. Now I don't I don't have to run my motor. I don't have to run my uh, my actually trolling motor. Uh, this is enough. If if it's real windy, you still got to you know you got to nurse it along and give it a bump now and then. But by 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 putting that the keel on the bottom of it, you can steer the boat with just the keel. It works really nice, and it takes up almost no power because all you're doing is just turning the, the front of the, the front. Um, again, if you want to speed up or slow down, you can still you, you still got that ability with your with your uh, you know with your other with your, your trolling motor itself with the motor. But that's just a little uh, trick that I did with a with just a piece of aluminum. Um, you know, I put it on my on, on my trolling motor, and it really helps you know the, the steering. So, and it doesn't affect doesn't affect anything for jigging or anything. You know, when, when you're you know going back and you know using using the boat for, you know your trolling motor for other other reasons. I. I've got no negatives by having by having that on. And again, it it, it does help the steering quite a bit. Um, How long is that thing? It's. Uh, you know, How far down from the bottom of it? It's you can see here's the, the here's the bottom of the you know trolling the, the plate. And it, you know it goes past the. It's just, it's just, I guess it's like double <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you got to have enough to catch the water. I mean, you might be able to make it a little bit longer. Um, the reason why it's as long as it is is because I had to actually cut it off a little bit because I just took my head off walking around the front of the. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want it stuck sticking up too far because that thing, you know, it's it's just a, you know, mine is just a piece of, uh, you know, uh, aluminum, you know. So it's uh, but it 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 helps out a lot. So uh, it's it's an easier way, especially if you got problems or if. 
um, if you got a system or a bad battery and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to, you know, run your your motor the whole time. So um, pretty easy. Sure. I was all out of uh, I was all out of uh, ink, so the, the picture's kind of screwed up, but but it, you you can see what what I did there. So pretty easy. Um, The other thing I'll say, yeah, never, never leave, never leave fish to find fish. If you've got, if you've got fish in the morning, you've got fish throughout the day. Okay, uh, they may, they may say that they went deeper, or they might say they moved. And you know, if you're, I, yeah, they don't. They, they they turn on and they turn off. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. A little trick that I use um, for spring coho fishing. Okay, this will put more fish in the box. Okay, All right? Coho, what do we? Co coho, we've got um, what you know? They're, they're two or three pounds. Okay, and or a pound and a half. You know, everybody. Everybody knows. You know the, the, the larger body baits that we that we set out for kings, um, and they they catch coho as well. They they actually catch quite a few of them. But it's a bit, these are large baits. Okay, the, some of the things that I've done over the last few years are downsized. I've downsized to. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, the you know the guys over on the west side of the, of the state, and a lot of the people now. That especially that are just getting into salmon fishing have you know are learning this up front well you know running all these small baits running all these small baits was unheard of back when I, back, back when I started salmon fishing okay I mean no nobody did it but I can tell you um, you know when we talk about clarity of the water I mean some I mean sure we we, we everyone's looking for that five to six foot of color break you know because that's you know of course that's you know where we have our best luck, but you know, when, when we're fishing the weekends, we don't have those options. You know, just sometimes you know we're out there and you're in 25, 30 feet of water, and you can see every rock, every pebble underneath your boat. You know, what do you do in those days? Those days we downsize, okay, and we downsize big time, okay. When um, when I when I downsize, I mean, I I go small, small, okay. Um, this this these these size baits. If you open, you know. For the, I don't catch many kings on these. Okay, all right. They, uh, the, the kings take larger baits. All right, um, but you know we've all we've all caught steelhead and cohos and opened up their stomachs and what do we see? I mean, we see ladybugs. We see just little, little who knows what. You know, little grubs and just you know all, all kinds of stuff from the surface. So um, you know, just just playing on on those uh, reasonings. You know, I've I've downsized a lot on this on these. And um, I actually found a way to, to use some baits that makes it still very effective where we can run and we can catch, we can still run our big baits, okay? There's, um, I've been doing this for just a couple years now and it's been effective, all right? And what I've been doing is I've been taking large baits, so we're still fishing for our king, okay? All right, and then what we do is we just take Take these little streamers, okay? You can take these little streamers, and you run them right behind your big bait. Hook it right into, hook just just piggyback it. Put put it right on right on the, the tail. And I just use a real small split ring. You want to use you want to use stuff as light as possible, okay? Because the more weight you the put you put behind this bait, the more it's going to affect the action. So the lighter we can keep what we're what we're pulling. The better, the better the, the action of the original bait is going to have. So I mean, it's pretty easy. You just hook, you know, you hook these little streamers to the back. Okay, these attract fish. Okay, whether they hit or not. These cohos, they'll come up, they'll, they'll, they'll come up, and they'll look at these baits all the time. A lot of them, you know, a lot of these cohos are that big. So this thing is, you know, one third of the size of the fish. So, um, and they, but they still hit them. But you watch them, and you watch them on video. 
they always hit the same way. They always just kind of come up to the back and just kind of bang at the back, bang at the back. And you catch them, but a lot of times you miss them. Um, we can put these little streamers behind it, okay? And they literally, as these are going through the water, there's nothing fancy, it's just a single hook, but they engulf this. And those little times when you're missing baits, or you're missing fish, and uh, uh, this can save the day. These little, this little thing will get you from five fish a trip to eight fish a trip, ten fish a trip, twelve fish a trip. I mean, it's just, you know, I, it's not a sell-all. It doesn't always work. But in clear water, when, we, when, we, when you're fighting for every fish that you can get, uh, this, 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 little, this little piggyback trick will really work on a spoon, Drew? It works on a spoon. Um, I I like it. In fact, I do it. I, I do it with spoons too. But spoons are heavier. Okay. So, but I use the the big lips. If I if I'm running <coughs> the, the the big lip bombers, I put a spoon on it. I piggyback. I almost always piggyback big lip bombers. I'll tell you that. You know. So anything that that's a deeper diver, a bigger bait that has a, a lot of action. I always put a like a mini streak. I don't go too heavy. I wouldn't put like a standard uh, or even a or like a mag spoon on there because it's too much weight on the back of it, and it really will, it really affects the uh, the uh, the action of it. But um, but you can put these little tiny baits like this that don't have much pull or the, the streamers. And the good thing is is you're still fishing for your big fish because the big fish still hit the you know the big fish still hit that bomber all the time. But you know. A lot of times you'll, you'll, you'll grab those steelhead or those coho, or even Atlantics, you know, because they have those opportunistic feeders that, that just take that little bait and boom. The good thing is, is this gets you down, you know. You, you can't just troll with that streamer because it's just going to sit there and drag on the surface. I mean, you could throw some lead core stuff out there, but there's that's a pretty small attractive, okay. You take you take the rattle, you take the rattle, the rattle brings the fish in. And they, they, they come in and look at it, and then they, they hit these little the, the little streamers behind, or the little streamers behind it. Now, would the action be any different with running a three-way? Um, <coughs> actually, a three-way you get better action because it, it's not going to be affected then. Okay, so your your bait will run the same. Um, three ways work okay with the bigger lips because they they, yeah, they drag yeah. more. But you know when when you know, baits that don't that don't dive as deep. You end up a lot of times you end up with a with a cluster, you know. You and and by by, by simply picking it picking back in the back on on the back like that, in my opinion, it's easier to run for one thing, and you don't get any problems. It doesn't, you know. I, I don't even if this wraps around the hook once or twice, it's, it really doesn't have have any effect on on you know the bait or the or the the back. And I just you know I just I just smell that on a piece of uh, uh, you know this is 15 pound floral. But well, you could even drop down. You could probably drop down to 12 pound floral because, again, I've I've never caught kings on this, you know. But it's but I but I have caught steelhead and I and the coho like it. Uh, I mean, what what got me thinking about it at first was, you know, you see all these guys running all these orange dodgers with these little flies all springtime on the west side for fish all the time. Um, I don't have, you know, as good a luck running those little dodgers for some reason. Some people really like them. For me, they they, they don't work very good. But, but by incorporating this, they still get the same effect. You've got the, you've got a small mouth size, you know. You've got a bait that the you know smaller fish can get their mouth on very easily. But then you're still you know you but you still have a working plug that you know can be uh, you know targeting you know other bigger fish as well. So. Is that effective all season or just spring? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's no. It's it's. I I'll be honest with you. I I haven't run it much in in the summer, but I fully intend to. Uh, this, is, this is fairly new for me. This, this, like I say, I've been running this for about three years now, and and, it, and it, it's proven itself to be. It seemed murderous. Up steel. Very effective. Top. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, you get the you get the bumblebee little little bumblebee streamers and stuff like that, and it's uh, it, the problem with running the, the, the problem with running these types of spoons is I mean they are these little plugs and stuff is they work really well, but the line and the the, the terminal tap, tackle that we use. You know, when we're trolling, makes these very ineffective because they they're so heavy and the line is you know 15, 20 pound test. These these types of lures they don't run good. You know, with with that really you know that that type of light line. So by switching over to a smaller you know smaller you know leader, uh, that would help that out you know, quite a bit. What about hook size on those trailers? On the on these, 
Uh, these are just a six or an eight. I mean, it's just a, there's, it's just, it's, it's just a single hook, so it's not as, I mean, I just bought these right off the shelf. I mean, I, I mean, it, I, I would definitely look into, you know, I've some. I've got coho flies, which are real similar. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so, I mean, I'm, Joel can set you up. I mean, I've, I've just used the standard size sixes and fours, you know, just standard, uh, standard so hooks. fly rigging, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, this is this is just a just a woolly booger streamer fly, you know. And the good thing, I mean, you know, this these don't get very deep on their own. But when you when you, when you can piggyback them on something that, that's diving back behind it, and I like a, a shorter lead too. And again, from what I've seen, it's just I think you know that wiggle is just enough just to give this a little twitch. So if you if you you know <coughs> run it out, you know, six eight feet. I think it's, it has more of a tendency just to drag through the water, where where you know having a, a shorter leaf gives it just it gives it a little bit more of a action. But again, you know when, when they concentrate on that, it's really easy, especially if there's more than one fish in the group, to, for another fish to you know hit on that. And I usually you know they, they I think they just pick that up as they're as they're running you know uh, up to the other fish. So, um, Is there a trick to getting them smaller baits, those little crank baits, out on standard boards? I was having problems last year with it. When there wasn't enough pull on them to get the release to go out, you know, on a regular planer board. Is there any tricks to getting them out? Or I'm talking to get down the main planer board line. Yeah, I, down, I couldn't get them to go down the main line. You can speed up a little bit. So kind of slow down. Yeah. On the release. Yeah, release the sink right oh, I see what you're talking about. Oh, on the yeah. big board you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, turn, and turn your boat. You know, you, you, well, when you're trying to set up, though, you don't want yeah, to be. <laughs> yeah. One guy's bitching, going, "Hey." <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, like, like I say, on, on, on these little on these little things like this, I'll, I I have a tendency to piggyback these more than I do to, to run these because I still, you know, I I've, I've only got a couple guys in the boat. Of course, I'm going to try to catch kings. You know, I mean, and it's I, these are good, you know, and they catch fish, but you know. I, I I would rather I, I would rather get this out there and get this in conjunction with it, catch both fish, as opposed to, you know, give up a give give up a rod for you know for for a smaller bait when I when I've got you know, chances to catch you know something else. Too. So, um, but uh, you know the the ne the next size up you know out of these you know I'll, and you know this size bait you know I'll run for kings. All day long, you know, and, and the same, the same with the, uh, you know, the, the same with your uh, hot tots and your, uh, you know, and, and the little, uh, you know, thin fins, you know, these, you know, this, this, well, this one in the, uh, yep. this one in, in Fire Tiger won me the uh, spring fling two years in a row, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Colors. <laughs> Colors. Um, I like. Jeez. I mean, you've got you've got your old standards. You've got the Fire Tiger, which has been good forever, and it's always going to be good. You know your purples. You know your your pur purples are. I, I still like I still like the purples. You know oranges. Oranges are always always good uh, too. Um, you know your bomber bomber colors. Yeah, this is. Oops, you know, you, these are, so a lot of these are harder to find anymore. I mean, the, you know, if you find if you find anyone that's got old bombers that are funky color, and I don't care what funky color it is, buy it because just because I'll buy it off you <laughs> later. <laughs> so, um, you know, I used to, I used to think that way, but I don't I don't think that way anymore. You know, crystal clear water, man. That that. That little that little thin fin is still dynamite. You know that, that orange is still still a really good 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 bait. Um, I'm a real big fan of the gold gold and orange. I mean this you know this bomber's been around a long time and this I would say you know this, this I've always called this old faithful and I call it for a reason. So I mean if, it, if nobody's got that bait, I mean if everyone's got you know needs one of these in the box because it's a that's a really good uh, springtime bait. I mean you did notice too that I did. Uh, I do cut the front hook off of my three three hook bombers. I don't do that with Rapalas. The Rapalas are a little bit too sensitive on on the wobble and things. You know, the lift's a little bit different. But I do that on these, and I do it on my pirates. Okay, uh, I'll take the I take the front hook off, and uh, no other reason. It's just another hook that gets screwed up, messed up in the net. Okay, 
Um, if, if you're netting these fish, especially coho, they spin. You know that uh, uh, by by using just the two hooks instead of the three hooks, uh, I still get very good hooks set up. I don't really lose any fish, and uh, and again, it's it's a lot easier to get out of the net. <coughs> Do the trailer um, setups work any better with jointed or non-jointed bodies? It depends on the bait. Um, you know, all the baits are different. I these uh, the fat, fast tracks. They're fast tracks are they're, they're made to run faster, so uh, their action was a little bit less critical than say like like a jointed Rapala. You know, a jointed Rapala. You, you can get those things spinning pretty quick if you kick your speed up a little bit faster. So, you know, again, it's different. It depends more on the type of bait that you're running. But yeah, I, I know I'll run them on, on the jointed fast tracks all day long because you, you know these things can run. You can run these things at three and a half mile an hour, and they don't and they they don't roll on you. So they're they're they're, they're you know they're made for a little higher speed running. So, uh, it, it, like like I say, it, it depends on the type of bait. More. Yeah, uh, any questions? I guess, uh, again. What about running like, like any body bombers? I just had like two color early out on the board. Is that something you play that's, a lot? That's, that's very effective. There's, there's, there's days that it's good. I get into too shallow water sometimes, and, I, and, it, and it can screw me up personally. Um, I, I mean, I run one color, and I run two color, and you know, I run a 30 foot, you know, uh, a uh, piece of, uh, of you know copper a, a lot in the spring. I I usually got to get out into that 16, 16 to twenty foot of water well, before I actually, before I start. Yeah, I don't that. Close six to twelve. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you get you into it, you water. know, if, if if you're in that 15, 16 foot, that one one and two colors is very effective. Um, but I still I still uh, fish feed up, so. You know, you're always better. To, you're always better to be on top of them than underneath them. So, but yeah, I mean, one color. There's, you know, there's. You gotta run it. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 times where that that they just want that. Whether there's a little temperature break that that one color seems to be running through, or, or I'm not sure what. But uh, but yeah, I I usually you know I, I I I typically try to run a little bit higher than the fish are. You know, usually. So. Um, you like a go-to leader length behind you run behind your copper. <clears throat> 75 feet or 100 or... Um, I run everything while 75. It's on copper? On depends, it depends on when I fish in the present. I'll be honest with you, I'm probably <laughs> my most effective rod has a copper lead. It's that long. Yeah, that's very tight. How about lead core though? I meant lead core and I said copper. Uh, lead, lead core... 20 feet. Yeah. So I'm excessive with 75. It's, that's a lot. Well, we, we got you, you got you got to remember what's happening here, okay? I mean, you know, you, you lead cores change in change in depth constantly right. based on the, <coughs> the speed and the turn. Okay, if you, so if you want if you if you want that bait to be changing with it, it's you know it's going to change a lot easier if it's if your lead is tighter than longer. If, you, if your lead's longer, it, it's going to have le less of an effect uh, of your of your, your bait behind it. How drastically would you say that? Uh, line bow affects the diveability of the lure. You know, if you're running back, say you're running at 100 feet, at some point when you let it so far back, does the bow and the line begin to drag the lure up? We had that theory last year. With, with lead core? No, with, uh, with my. No. Well, there, there, there. You might have a little bow, but it's still. Yeah, yeah, I mean, your, your bait's going to dive. I mean, you know, m most baits have a rec you know, they, they tell you what what what, kind of, what depth they're going to uh, dive. Um, the main reason for letting it out further is if the fish are boat shot. That's the main reason. That's I mean, that, that's why you're trying to get it out there. Is you know, if the fish are boat shy, you know, then you you know, you get your leads up to the side, and you get them you, you you get them back away from the boat as far as possible in the springtime. That's that's typically what I see. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't see any problem you know really with the bow. I mean it it may yeah, it, yeah not not in the depths that we're talking. I just got one buddy that runs from like 250 300 feet back and he thinks he needs to lures diving up on the water. Oh, that far back? 
Oh, uh, he's probably yeah. trying to prove an idiot wrong. <laughs> yeah, he's digging, he's digging something. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 either he's either hitting bottom and catching something and it's coming back up or right. something. Yeah. Um, you know, the clips that I use, I mean, I've run a lot of body base in the springtime, and I, I typically don't do a lot with swivels, only because I also use, a, I, I run a lot of smaller baits in the springtime as well as, you know, some larger ones. So I, I, I my, my planer board is pretty much just, I, I run just the snap, just the, that dual lock snap, um, rather than, again, you know, keeps the weight off the, off the front end a little bit and uh, helps the action. Um, I found if, uh, even if it, with the body baits, if it if it hooks up and it's spinning, it's because it's because you know it, one of the hooks got wrapped up in the front, and the, the swivel doesn't help that at all. It's you know it, it doesn't stop that from spinning. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I use a lot of these snaps. Um, I don't use them on my rigger on my rigger rods or the dipsy rods only because uh, I do run a lot of spoons in the springtime. And when I run the, when I run the spoons, I run the spoons typically on either riggers or the dipsies. Reason being. Um, you get less, I, I like to keep them closer to the boat because they're not as effective as much by speed. When you're speeding up and slowing down closer to the boat, the, the, the effect is exaggerated as you get further away from the boat. And, um, you know, with, with spoons, because they sink, you know, when, when, you're, when you're making that tight turn or you're turning, the, the inside uh, spoons, they, they dig in the bottom a lot and you end up losing a lot of extra gear like that. So, so. You know, I I, prim I I primarily just use body weights on the boards, and if I'm if I'm running spoons or they're on spoons, the spoons I will use I, I stick to them on the on the dipsies, the slide divers, and the you know, and the, your your, your downriggers. So. How far back are you running your spoons off your downriggers? I never run my riggers as far back as I do the uh, you know the uh, you know my my boards. I you know I'm typically 40 to 60 even. You know, like you said, you know, throwing a slide, throw, throwing a, just, just throwing a free slider off it, and, and having that thing run five, six feet behind the ball. Sometimes, man, especially those coho, man, they're 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 on. Uh, you know, I think that prop wash just attracts them. It's, you know, there's, there's times, there's times, you know, a, a dipsy step five back out of that with, you know, with the, with only five back, you know, behind the the, you know, the dipsy itself is on fire. You can't hardly keep the thing in the water. So. You know, like, you know, there, there's no rules, you know, to, to say, you know, that when, there, when, when the bite is like that, I do, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I don't need to run everything 150, 200 back anymore. And, you know, I do the same thing with my boards. I, you know, put my boards 25, 30 feet back and, you know, let them go. So. Don't educate the fish, give them what they want. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of any type of farm or any farm where they say what, like, a mag saves on, say, ten foot of model behind anything? Well, they got those. Twenty feet behind. Are you talking about those trolling guys that they have? Those trolling boats? <coughs> no, yeah. just regular mag, mag spoon, just out in the water, putting twenty foot of mono or put twenty foot behind the ball. Where does it truly carry? Does it sag down two feet or a foot, or just stay straight behind the ball and stick the foot back? They they, they they don't they don't drop much. Spoons don't really drop well, much uh, off off the rigger. I mean, they they I'm sure they you know they, they may be. Yeah, you know, you've got gravity, so so it, it's dropping a little bit, but it's it's not significant. I mean, you you know, if you want if you want to get more of that stealthy approach and get away from the cannonball, you know, putting putting two or three color of lead uh, on on the cannonball is going to be far more effective than trying to you know weight it if you want it to get the weight weight it down, getting away from the cannonball. All you guys are GoPros, good, good little project for you. You can find out exactly what it's going. Watch them here. Yeah. Yeah, I told my wife I want to see those. <laughs> yeah. water, see those Everybody water, wants one. Those water wolves. I want one of those water yeah. wolves. Yeah, those hey, Dan, we'll stick around for a while. Um, let's give Dan. Dan. Uh, we'll do a discount. We'll do 10% off any body baits, any kind of hard baits. Um, don't forget, next week we'll be sturgeon fishing and. Thanks for the turnout, guys. That's I counted. Uh, I think there were 71 people. Uh, so that's yeah. We took up the whole block of parking.